San Antonio during the holidays. The Mexican-American community celebrates the posadas. I remember we would get to play as children, Mary or Joseph or the angels, and we learned to sing those songs as part of growing up. You celebrated the posada for nine days, and then the final day you would actually go to the church. Five hundred years ago, before Europeans came, we as indigenous people celebrated the sun god. What an important god that is, you know, who gives us life. There were nine days of festivities, and this just happened to be during the middle of December. But when the Spanish conquerors come in, they want to rid the indigenous communities of those celebrations. And so the sun god gets replaced by Jesus and our celebration of Navidad. Vas a hacerme una base, una tortilla, uh -huh. para que hagamos esa base. Sí. Mientras yo hago los arcos, vamos a hacer un, un árbol con el tema de la Navidad. Ok. Ok. Verónica Castillo es la master craftsperson de Puebla. She and her family have built many trees of life that are focused on Navidad. Bueno, el árbol de la vida viene desde nuestra época, desde la cultura olmeca. Sobre todo como descendientes de una generación que ha ido pasando de familia en familia. Y nosotros somos cuarta generación. Nada más era para las fiestas del pueblo. Navidad y para Día de Muertos o el cambio de cofradía. No vi cómo lo haces, lo haces con tus dedos wow. o lo haces con las palmas. Si lo presionas fuerte, vas a empezar a dejar marcas. Uh -huh. Entonces debe de ser un suave, pero a la vez un poco fuerte. Todo tiene solución, menos la muerte. <risa> Mientras él seca, podemos hacer todas las figuras que se necesiten para nuestra pieza. The origins of the Tree of Life begins in Mexico when a family identified that they were going to marry two different children to each other. The families would give a branch to their respective future families. Aquí está nuestro primer pétalo. They held on to that branch for 10 years. And on the 10th year, they would take those branches and burn them. Esta es la Pascua. And then instead of the branch, what they shared with each other was a tree of life in clay. Aquí tienes tu pelotita que esta va a ser la carita de tu ángel. Mm -hmm. Marcamos la cara. La barbilla. Y ahí lo tenemos. Los, sus mejillas. Y ahorita le vamos a poner su boquita. Mira, nada más haces cortes de barro y como dándole si fuera un pelo rizado. Sus ojitos. When the Spanish conquerors come in, bringing in their Catholic religion, the tree of life changes. The regular husband-wife becomes Adam and Eve. 
Now it's about good and evil. And so instead of vines going up, it suddenly is like a snake, the evil coming in. Today, people are starting to remember what their traditions were in the past. Hay que ver que quede derecho. derecho. Okay. And the Castillo family are now coming back to what their great-great-great-grandparents did before the conquest. Ahí está. Perfecto. Es una costumbre en México de celebrar a nuestros difuntos. So we have this piece called Ofrenda to honor the people that die. And so this ofrenda is to honor my father and his life. Y la ofrenda es de lo que les gustaba bastante en la vida, ya sea la buena música, el beber, el comer, fruta, dulce, todo lo que le encantaba a la persona a quien se le está ofreciendo ese altar. Veronica Castillo has been teaching the skill of making these works in clay to the Mexican-American women of San Antonio for 17 years. She has kept up the tradition of her family, but she's also gone beyond what anybody in her family has done. And we have been honored to have her. Gracias. Mucho, mucho, mucho.